Let's catch up with Pete Thamel of Sports Illustrated. College football season coming up. Seems like there's just a lot of floating issues and stories and controversies. Is it more than usual this year, Pete? Yeah, I, 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 my nickname for uh, Johnny Football is Johnny Drama because uh, the, the one thing about his situation is it's not going to end anytime soon. Uh, I always like to say about the uh, NCA, Mike, the only thing when there's an NCA investigation and someone that you can definitively predict is that it will go slowly. And that just means the will Johnny play, will Johnny not play is going to become the dominant storyline of the, you know, of at least tending into the first week of the college football season. Because they're not going to announce it. Because if they do that, it's like flipping the bird to the NCAA. Like they're not, you know, respecting how serious the charges are. And then if they do, they're they're gambling like Auburn did with Cam Newton when they played him under investigation. A lot of schools would have would have sat him at that juncture. So that would be the biggest floating, lingering issue heading into the uh, heading into the season. And the story with Manziel is that he reportedly signed somewhere along the lines of forty four hundred autographs, presumably for brokers, reportedly received money for it, although there's been no definitive evidence. Has there been a denial from anyone, from Manziel, from Texas A&M, from anyone on this idea that Johnny Manziel received money? You know, it's not smart when you're dealing with NCAA cases to, to kind of speak publicly. I mean, look, like, if you are a rational human being, you cannot think, sit here and think, Johnny Manziel did this and didn't get paid. Like, there's no rational human that can that can really sit down, analyze the evidence that's been put forth. And I understand it's from anonymous sources, but like, look, he has numbered one one hundred ninety nine. I mean, he's left evidence. It's like he's like he left a trail of breadcrumbs behind him. Um, and it, it, I'm not saying that this definitely means he's going to be suspended, but it definitely means he. He did this. You know, I, I don't think there's a, there's no doubt in my mind that he did it. The, the circumstantial evidence is very obvious, but the, the you know the protocol in these NCAA situations, Mike, is to just sit tight, keep your mouth shut, because at the end of the day, there's no paper trail for the money. I mean, nobody nobody rational really believes Cam Newton didn't get paid, but there was no money trail, so he played. So and you, and, and Auburn won the national. Are, Pete Thamel, Sports Illustrated, are you saying that there will be no ruling by the first game that the Texas A&M Aggies play this season? Yeah, I have no idea. And anyone who tells you they do is lying. I mean, nobody has any idea right now. But I, what I will say is that if there's one thing that's going to happen, it's going to move slow. I mean, there's now, I think, six different cases that ESPN has reported going forward, which means, and, and who knows if any of those people will talk to the NCAA. They probably, they probably won't because it, it could be bad for business to, uh, to do that. But that means there's just a lot of stuff for them to dig into, a lot of, a lot of places to go, a lot of investigating to do. So I, I, if this is all resolved before week one, I would be pretty surprised. But nobody knows how far along the NCAA is on this. No one knows how seriously they took it before it became public. They're a very reactionary organization. If this was something they got tipped on, they might have just kind of nosed around it, not found any evidence, and, and moved on. Because in the grand scheme of life, this isn't you know this isn't murder one. This is this is more along the jaywalking sense. But now there's an enforcement department at the NCAA, Mike, which. Is luckily one of the things in your your life's purview. You probably don't have to think about very much. But the enforcement department's a mess. They've had like eight key members leave of you know forty something person department, uh, maybe fifty something person department in the last uh, I'd say calendar year. That's what, those are those are estimates. But the enforcement department is a hot mess. It's disintegrating in front of them. The Miami situation was a debacle. They gassed the lady in charge. Brought in a guy from the outside. Everyone who was loyal to to, to Julie Rolash, who they who they who they fired unceremoniously, and she might have resigned or whatever, but they clearly got rid of her. It was very obvious. Um, is is bailing? There's literally competition between people in that enforcement staff. Steve. Uh, the, the the climate there, the environment there is extremely toxic. So you have this department that's in shambles, and then you have the highest profile player in the country sitting here having clearly violated NCAA rules, and it's sort of this like fascinating litmus test: can this can this inept arm of the NCAA get their stuff together? under the brightest possible lights. And I think that's like the most fascinating storyline going into the end of the summer here. Visiting with Pete Thamel of Sports Illustrated and the latest SI cover has SI's top 10 in the left rail. It's the regional cover, several different teams, but Alabama, Stanford, A&M, Ohio State, Oregon, South Carolina, all listed in the top 10 and all on the regional covers. How many teams do you realistically think can win the national championship this year? It's a, it's a, it's a great question. Um, I would think there's probably five or six. And that's uh, 
and that's it. I mean, there's always a team like Notre Dame last year that kind of comes out of nowhere, and Notre Dame sort of had a had a, had a had a charm season, pulled some games out late against Pitt and Stanford they couldn't have, and, and ended up in the title game. But you can argue, did they really have a chance you know, when they when they when they did roll out on the field there? I mean, they were they were just physically completely and thoroughly dominated by uh, by Alabama. But if, if you look at this season, I think there's two teams out west that have a chance. Uh, Oregon's one of them. They are just loaded up skill wise. They, they you know good recruiting class is piled on top of good recruiting class there. They're much better defensively than they were you know, early in Chip Kelly's time there. The big question at Oregon is Mark Elfrich. I mean, the, you know, he hasn't called a play in a long time. And, uh, and, and you know, the, the wizard behind the curtain there was always Chip. He was the maestro. He brought in the hyper, hyper tempo. He sort of set college football off on, on a different course. And, you know, everyone's fascinated with what he's obviously going to do in the NFL. Um, can Elfrich keep that rolling? Well, it helps if you have Marcus Mariota as your quarterback and you have Anthony Thomas returning kicks and kind of being your – been one of your featured uh, featured guys there, and uh, I think their schedule is really, really easy. So I think there's going to be a nice adjustment period for Helfrich. Um, so I think they're a definitive contender. They they probably have been the closest team to breaking this SEC run. Um, they you know that Auburn game until Mike Dyer kind of does that tumble and does fall on, on that run. They, they looked like they were going to beat Auburn uh, in the, in that title game. And I think the other team out west, a uh, team that I that I wrote about in the uh, in the SI preview issue, I did a big profile of their linebacker Shane Scove is Stanford. Uh, they're kind of like Alabama light right now. They've won as many games as Alabama has the past three seasons. They their revival, much like Alabama's under Nick Saban, has come from running a pro style offense, recruiting great quarterbacks, starting obviously with Andrew Luck, and they have Kevin Hogan now, who who proved late last season that that he has the talent to be to be an elite type quarterback in college football. And they just they, they don't do anything crazy. They have great offensive linemen, great tight ends. They run the ball down your throat. They're a power running team, and uh, defensively, I think Stanford will be or could be. The, the best defensive team in, in the country this year. They they're loaded up on talent on that side of the ball. They've had they've had just a ton of guys go to the go to the NFL. But I, I know that that will be one of the defenses that will be that will be most prominently featured next uh, next spring in the NFL draft. Uh, Scove at linebackers one. They've got uh, they got Harry Anderson on the defensive end. I've seen him compared to JJ Watt. They've got Trent Murphy. They've got some young. They've got two safeties who are Mel, uh, two of Mel Kiper's top three safeties. You know, in the in the upcoming draft next year, they're very talented on that side of the ball. Their program has great momentum running forward, and I, I think they they certainly could be in conversation at the uh, at the end of the year. We have them ranked number two. Um, then there's a handful of SEC teams that could do this, uh, along with Ohio State. I think those are probably that, and, and the SEC teams are sort of the sort of the obvious ones. A&M has a shot if uh, if Johnny can escape the law. Um, South Carolina's very good, obviously. I'm sure the Jadavian Clowney hype has long been ensconced in uh, in your world, Mike. And you look around the SEC, and there, there, there's you know, George, I, I really like Georgia. I think Georgia will be better this year than people think. They lost a lot on defense, but I think offensively they're as talented as anyone in the country. So, yeah, it, it's you know, after Alabama, it's wide open, right? Yeah, and that's part of the fun of it. And it's the last year of the BCS, so we'll have something. Uh... Less to complain about come 2014, but one last year for the final scramble. Last 30 seconds. Oh, we'll, we'll find plenty to complain oh, about. They'll be, and, we'll, we'll, and we'll probably miss having the BCS to complain about. Last 30 seconds for Pete Thamel, Sports Illustrated College football writer. If you had to make a Heisman pick today, who would you pick? It's a great question. Um, I think Braxton Miller would probably be like the best value play. You know, that, as my horse racing buddies uh, would say, they have the easiest schedule, they have added toys. Um, they have a running back who's suspended indefinitely, so that's going to mean he's going to run more. He's going to put up huge numbers against the light schedule, and uh, I really think that, that he will be right there in the, in the conversation. I said all offseason before the Manziel trouble that he won't win it again. Part of it is because the tackle jockle's gone. Now, obviously, Shane Matthews moves over to left tackle, and he's a huge prospect as well. But I just think as things, you know, it's hard to do it twice in a row, and a lot of it is your offseason distractions. Well, you just saw what he was distracted by. So, yeah, I think putting your horse line Miller isn't a, isn't a bad bet right now. All right, great stuff, Pete. We'll talk to you again soon, buddy. Have a great day. Mike, thank you. Take care. Pete Thamel, Sports Illustrated.